I've seen a number of different approaches on various blogs about how to unit test CRM plugins. I've tried a bunch of different things out, and what I'm about to show you is my preferred approach. So the way I prefer to unit test plugins is a combination of using a project from CodePlex called the CRM 2011 Plugin Testing Tools. You can get there by going to crm2011plugintest.codeplex.com as well as the Moles Isolation Framework, which is available to you from the Visual Studio Gallery. To get there, you just go to the Visual Studio Gallery, which is at visualstudiogallery.msdn.microsoft.com, and you search for Moles. Since I'm on an X64 install, I want the X64 version. So you're going to want to download the output from this project as well as install moles to get this working. Additionally, I am using the developer toolkit which is part of the CRM SDK. And once you install the SDK, that's available at C in inside that directory wherever you expand the SDK to, um, you'll find in the tools section something called developer toolkit. If you install this, that will give you add-ins to Visual Studio to make plugin development easier. All right, so a couple things to point out. What the uh, CRM plugin testing tools allow you to do is really two things. They allow you to take the context that's passed into plugin execution and save it as a file so you can replay it later. And so it's that replay facility that makes it very useful for testing. So there are really two projects that you need to care about. There's the serialized plugin context. This is what you'll deploy to CRM to create that file. And then you'll have a project called test plugin, which is what you'll use to read the file. So a couple things of note. To get this working, I had to modify the source code. If you notice, there are a couple patches. So those patches are not incorporated into the source code, so I had to apply them. So I'll give you a link to my starter project that you can use to take my changes. I haven't submitted them back to this, this CodePlex project yet, but I, I plan on it. So to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to take this serialized plugin context DLL and deploy it to CRM as a plugin so it can capture interacting with CRM and, and save that plugin context for us to use later for testing. So to do that, I'm just going to use the CRM plugin registration tool. I'm going to come in here and register a new assembly. There's that serialized plugin context DLL. So I'm going to grab it. Yours will be wherever you put it. I'll go ahead and say open. And then I'm going to go ahead and register this plugin. Okay, so it's registered. Great. Now what I want to do is I actually want to test, write a plugin. Uh, and then write a unit test for a plugin that interacts when an, an account is created. So I'll go ahead and register a step. And this is going to be for the create message on the account entity. And then we want to do that in the pre-operation. Go ahead and say register new step. Great, so that's registered. So now I'm going to come over to my CRM environment and I'm going to create a new account. And the plugin that we're gonna, the scenario for the plugin that we're gonna write is that when we type in a zip code, the plugin will populate city and state. And ultimately we'll do that by calling out to an external web service. But we're kind of building on this concept. So I'll go ahead and click save here. So that plugin executed. Now if I come into C Windows Temp, you'll notice that a file was just created. If I open this up, it is in fact a bunch of XML that represents what gets passed into the plugin. Now the first question you might have here is, well, what if I don't have access to the CRM server? What if it's in CRM online, etc.? Well, the good news is this is just source code. So you can download the source code for serialized plugin context. And instead of saving it to the Windows temp directory, you could, for example, modify the source code to save it to an entity that you created. But the real key here is getting at that, the contents of that XML file, getting at that XML. All right, so now that we have that created, 
Let's go into my starter project. Now, so this is exactly what it's going to look like when you download it for me. I've um, done a few things to this, just, just to be clear. In this project, I have that test plugin project, which again comes from the CRM plugin testing tools. I've made the necessary modifications so that the constructor of this thing called my service provider takes a stream. So if you actually look at the documentation down here, my service provider takes a string. And because of the way that we're going to read this in and provide it to the unit test, it was easier to, to do it with a stream. And so I mod modified my service provider to take a stream. I also modified plugin.cs here. Now, if you're familiar with the way the developer toolkit allows you to create plugins, this is part of the, this base class here is, is part of what the template creates for you. It just makes, uh, it puts some additional plumbing or some basic plumbing into a base class that all your plugins will use. But by default, that base class is not test friendly to get the results of the plugin execution out to test. So what I did is I went in here and I modified a couple things. Basically, um, I made local plugin context public and then I made a publicly available property called plugin context which exposes uh, local plugin context. This will make a little bit more sense as we, we dig into the unit testing. Alright, now I have a, a test project and what you'll notice is that I've already added references to my plugin project which I'm going to test. I've also added a reference to my test plugin project which has all the helper utilities to read that XML file. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to need to do here is come in and add that XML file. We'll say add existing item and we'll go to Windows temp and we'll change this to all files and grab that file there. Okay, so that file there, but in order for us to read it, there, there are a couple different ways of, of you know, reading files via unit testing. My preferred approach is to make that file an embedded resource. So I'm not going to go into great detail about embedded resources and unit testing of files and all re by reading files and all that sort of thing. But this is my preferred approach of, of being able to read from files is through using embedded resources. And the two things you want to do is you want to set embedded resource as the build action and you want to set copy always uh, for copy the copy to output directory property. We'll save that. The next thing you'll notice is that I have this class called my testing helpers. And basically what it does, let me pin this, is it just takes the explicit file name right here and then it goes ahead and figures out how to get the contents of the file read into a stream and passed off for my test method. All right, so now we need to create the plugin that we're going to test first. So let's go ahead and go over to CRM Explorer. Let's create an account plugin. And we want the message to be create and we want it to be in the pre-operation and that's good, right? Because this is the same situation that we captured and dumped into that XML file. So go ahead and click OK here. And so we need to implement our logic. So before we do that, let's wire up creating a test for this. So what I'm going to do is just copy this right here and I'm going to come in and say add new item. Oops, wrong place. I have a new test. And we're going to call it a basic test. And I'm going to call this the same name as my plugin class, Tests. Okay. And then this test method is going to be called valid zip code test, right? Because that's the scenario that we've created here is a, a valid zip code passed into the plugin. Go out and call a web service. Okay. So the first thing we're going to want to do is 
read from this file so we can pass the information off to the plugin. So I happen to have my finished product over here. And so first let's kind of get this set. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do here is we're gonna wanna arrange, act, and assert. All right, and so to arrange, I've got uh, some pre-canned code working here, so let's get all this going. And I'll explain what's going on here. We'll go ahead and import these types. All right, so this is coming from our plugin assembly. That's this over here. So I'm just gonna use ReSharper to make it easier to quickly reference that. Notice it added a using statement up there. So let's use ReSharper here to import that type. Now, of course, you would have to do this all manually since I use ReSharper, it makes it easier. Let's clean that up. Okay, so first, we're basically calling that helper method that I showed you earlier to get the stream for this file. So we're reading it, passing it up to my service provider, again, which I modified to take a stream. And what this is going to do is it's going to give you a class that implements the iService provider interface. And again, if you look at a, the base plugin class, right, what does a plugin implement? it implements or it gets past the iService provider interface, right? This is the context that gets passed into the plugin. Okay. So the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is execute the plugin, right? So you can just say plugin.execute and pass that service provider in. Okay, that's great. So let's actually go into the plugin and write some code. This is pretty empty, so again, I'm gonna steal some code from my finished product. And go back into my plugin code here. And so basically what we're doing here is we're getting at that plugin execution context and getting the target entity here. And then, so where's account coming from? Well, I happen to have a class that I generated earlier that has early bound types. So I'm gonna add an existing item. We're gonna go up one here. And we're gonna to go to my final here. And we're going to grab the entities. Yes. If you look at that, that basically just has the account class that I generated. So I'm not doing uh, late bound binding. I'm doing early binding. That's a preference, but in, in my code, I tend to do early binding for developer productivity. Okay. So in the plugin, basically we're just getting the entity out of the target of the input parameters and we're getting it into a variable of type account so we can interact with it. So in this case, since the account form was passed, the postal code, right? Let's go ahead and just to get started, let's set the account, um, I don't know, city equal to the postal code. Now that's not what we ultimately want to accomplish, but we're doing baby steps here. Okay. So now if I come back to my test, I can then, after the plugin's executed, I can go ahead and get the value out so I can basically take the same code here. Let's just grab all this. On the outside, right? And then in this case, we'll just change this to plugin dot plugin context dot plugin execution context. And again, this is one of the modifications I had to make to the plugin base class was to make this public. So after execute is run, we can actually get at the values from a testing perspective. So we want to add a reference to Microsoft.xrm.sdk.entity, right? Which 
added a using up here to microsoft.xrm.sdk. Of course, you, you're, if you're not using Resharper, you're gonna have to do that manually. But now, on the outside, I can test as well. So now I can do my assertions and I can say assert dot r equal, and let's say the zip code that was passed in. And then I can say account dot city, right? Because that's what I did over here. I populated account dot city. And so now I have a fully complete test, which basically loads up the context information, passes it off to the plugin, calls through its execute method, and then I can test the results of the execute method. So if I right click this, refresh, and run this test, you'll notice that my unit test passed. I haven't deployed anything to the CRM server. I can even do things like come in here and you know right click and say debug. Right, hit my breakpoint and actually debug my code. So at this point, we've already increased our productivity because we're not going through this constant deploy to the server, register kind of process, attach debugger, or any of that sort of thing. We're basically just capturing what was passed in, passing it off to the plugin ultimately, and executing our code. So I can iterate real rapidly in my plugin code uh, and, and get much more productive. So that's a step in the right direction. But what we really wanna do in this plugin, as we mentioned, is call an external web service. And so to do that, I'm going to grab this web service, which is a freely available web service, and I'm gonna come back over to Visual Studio, and in my plugin code, I'm gonna add a service reference. Go ahead and click Go, and we'll just call this US Zip Service Reference 1. Click OK. Right, so in our plugin code, now this is where the testing becomes harder because if I make calls to this web service, the unit test, when it runs, will actually call the web service. So where we want to get to is using moles to detour the call to the web service and actually call some code in isolation. But before we get there, let's go ahead and wire up this web service call. So I'm going to go back to my finished product here and I'm going to grab a few things. Okay, so if you've ever called a web service from a CRM plugin, you know that you have to build the binding and the endpoint address yourself. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm newing up the web service proxy here. And we can go ahead and get that out of the way to make it a little bit easier and add that reference. And so what that did is it just added a reference up here to my web service proxy reference or namespace. And so I'm newing up my web service client proxy and then I'm calling get info by zip I'm passing the postal code off and then because this web service why I'm not sure uh, passes back an XML node um, what I'm gonna have to do here is that then extract those values out so watch if I put a breakpoint here and I right click and I say debug selection What we'll see, I'm go ahead and put a breakpoint there as well. If I hit F5, and let's clear that as well. Right before the web service call, we haven't called the web service yet. If I hit F5 now, it's actually going out and making a call to the, this public facing web service. Now, of course, I'm going to be running my unit test over and over and over again, so I don't want to constantly hit a web service, a database, or anything uh, that's not isolated to this piece of code, right? That's what unit testing is all about. It's all about testing in isolation. And so while so far we've just used that tool from CodePlex, the next thing we'll do is actually use moles to solve this part of the, the unit test here. So in this case, let's just go ahead and get our values, right? We've got city state. Notice that the response, if we look at the um, 
the outer XML, right? It's just a bunch of XML. So what we need to do, and of course, if we go through here, look at that. Now this test is gonna fail because I'm trying to assert that city is 20148. It's not anymore, it's actually what we want it to be. So this test will fail, that's okay. Let's just go ahead and stop the test. And let's change this. We want the city to be Ashburn. And we want the state to be Virginia. So call this state or province. And so that's the real test that we want. We want to read in the data, pass it off to the plugin, let the plugin execute, and then test that what our, whatever our plugin was supposed to do it did. But the problem again is if I call this execute over and over and over again as a test, then we're calling that external code over and over again. And again, if it's a web service, it's a database, it doesn't really matter what it is. We don't, we want to test it in isolation. We don't want it to actually do what it's supposed to do. So in order to do that, enter moles. So, so far, all we've done is used this helpful plugin testing tool to pass the context in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use moles, which again is available from Visual Studio Gallery. We're going to use moles to basically detour the call to the web service and, and basically during the, the execution of this test tell moles that when that web service is called, instead let me control what comes back from the web service, hence never actually calling the web service and essentially faking my code into believing that the web service was called. All right, so in order to do that, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is come over to that reference to our plugin, which is right here, right? This is our plugin project. You wanna right click this and say, add moles assembly. Now, if you, I'm in Solution Explorer, this doesn't show up in, uh, Solution Navigator, it only shows up in Solution Explorer. And second, if you haven't installed moles, you won't see this. So those are the two caveats. When you click Add Moles Assembly, notice it added this .moles file. So let's go ahead and build. And notice now, when I say plugin for your unit testing .tests, I'm sorry, that's the wrong namespace. Um, CRM unit testing dot plugins for unit testing dot. Notice there's a moles namespace, right? But more importantly, under every namespace, there's a moles namespace. So in this case, if I go to US zip service reference, which is my web service proxy, then I can find a moles dot and then it, all the classes that I may want to use to detour their logic are available here with an M prefix, right? So I've got, for example, M zip soap client. So what I'll do is, sorry about that. I'll go to my other project and go to the actual test code. And I'm going to steal a piece of code from here and bring it back over. Again, I need to you know, add a reference. So basically what that did is it added a reference to crm.unittesting.plugins, crm unit testing plugins for unit testing .us zip service reference .molds. And so what that allows me to do basically is say, look, anytime this US zip client, zip soap clients, get info by zip method is called, execute my code instead through a delegate and, and in this case, this is through an, a Lambda expression. So basically, when this actual web service call happens, go ahead and execute this code instead, right? And so in my case, we're gonna have to reference system.xml. Again, you're gonna have to manually do that. But basically then what I'm doing is I'm loading up an XML document. I'm basically faking out the, the result as the raw XML, and then I'm returning that document element. Now, if I weren't to, ha if I were to have this commented out, the web service call would happen. If I uncomment it, the web service call won't happen, 
and this code will execute instead. So let's go ahead and hit a breakpoint there. Let's right click and say debug selection. System that service model. Okay. So let's go in here and let's add a reference. Assembly system that service model. Okay, now let's build. Okay. So now let's put a breakpoint there. A right click and we'll debug the selection. So what Moles is telling you is that you have to have, add this host type attribute. I always forget this the first time. So let's go ahead and stop debugging. Right and on our test method, we'll say host type moles. And now Boom, so we're actually in our plugin. We're about to call the web service, but this time we're not actually gonna call the web service. Instead, my code's going to execute. Web service got its response, right? My code doesn't know the difference because we basically faked my code into thinking the web service was actually called. If you were actually to turn on Fiddler, you would see there's no HTTP request. This is all in isolation, which is exactly what you want to do with unit tests. And so I can hit F5 here. Now executes done, all the code still works. We can assert our values and our unit test executed successfully. And so I look at test results, boom, there it is. So what you've seen is through a combination of using the CRM plugin testing tools, and you know, my modifications to it, which live over here in this project, and using moles, we've been able to write a complete unit test in isolation where we didn't have to deploy to the CRM server because we passed using this my service provider and this XML file, we passed I service provider to the execute method here. Then when our call to the web service inside the plugin right here happened, instead of calling the web service, we're basically faking our code into believing that the web service is called passing a valid response. We can then, through the modifications I made to the plugin base class, get at that plugin execution context. You can take the generic entity and call to entity so that this is of type account. And then we can use all the goodness of IntelliSense in our assert statements to verify the values. And so if you're not into unit testing, you may ask yourself, you know, why all that work? Why did we do all this? Well, first of all, you're gonna have much more complex plugin code and you're gonna have many, many more scenarios. So you'll probably have multiple tests like valid zip code test, invalid zip code test, um, and a number of others to test the permutations and combinations of things that could happen during plugin execution, right? So you'll probably end up having multiple serialized files for your different tests based on different testing scenarios. And once you get this all wired up, it's really just a matter of iterating on your code like you're familiar with in traditional .NET development. There's no deploying to the server. There's no need to actually call the web service and, and those sorts of things. It's all just tested in isolation. And remember, unit testing is not about testing whether CRM is gonna pass the right thing in or not. And it's not about whether that external web service works or not. It's about testing your code to make sure that your logic is tested properly. So hopefully you'll be able to use this tip as a productive way of doing CRM plugin development. Again, this is my preferred way of writing plugins. I don't actually deploy to the server and that sort of stuff until I've got my base plugin code working. And then, you know, I can, can go back and right click and say, you know, deploy this to server. But 
I don't ever do that until I'm ready and I know that my I've written valid unit tests and everything seems to be working and then deploying it to the server is just that sort of final test and, and really it's for the other testers to ensure that everything's working uh, once my unit tests and prelim preliminary you know user test is complete.